Hello everyone. In line with government advice, we are, wherever possible, being asked to stay home, protect the NHS and save lives. As Vicar of Tavistock, Goldworthy and Brentor, I know that many have been asked to self-isolate and I thank you all for the ways in which you are responding to the coronavirus by seeking to follow this guidance. I too have been asked to self-isolate and thankfully for me this will come to an end next week when I will be able to fully resume my duties. I've missed you all. You've very much been in my thoughts and prayers. As we try to curb the spread of the virus, we are finding new ways to care for one another pastorally, particularly those who are vulnerable, anxious or frightened and in need at this difficult and challenging time. I've heard of numerous examples of heartwarming stories of the kindness and generosity of members of our congregations in helping others, literally putting love into action. And I thank you all for what has been done and what continues to be done. I thank you too for the faithfulness of prayer. This is what the Gospel asks of us, that we should love God and our neighbour. To love someone means to take responsibility for them and for their well-being. We are being called to do this in new ways and to seek to support one another and our communities. Nationally, the Church is making a growing range of digital resources available for those who are at home and this includes weekly broadcasts every Sunday, audio broadcasts for day and night prayer and new mental health guidance. Much of this content is downloadable and in printable formats. Over the coming weeks, I too hope to stream services, prayers and reflections. The first stream service will be on Palm Sunday at 9.45 a.m. and this will be followed by daily worship and reflections during Holy Week. As Passion Tide begins tomorrow, I offer this reflection in the hope that it may be of help at this time. In his Gospel, St Mark records a story of storms and chaos, of a world out of control. You can read about this in chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. In many ways, it feels at the moment as if we're on that boat, in the storm ourselves. We can imagine exactly what it's like. We can hear the fear of the disciples. We can see it in their faces and their agonised expressions. The sound of the waves breaking over the boat. The force of the wind raging. It's frightening. We know only too well because this is our world too. Storms and chaos are being experienced now. We know about all these things and it's hard not to be overwhelmed by them. But St Mark's story holds good news and we need to hear it. Jesus calms the storm. Storms, chaos and a world out of control are not the final word. God speaks powerfully. And from the Old Testament, in the book of Job, there is a story of personal suffering and of chaos, the life which is out of control. This is the story of Job. If we put ourselves in Job's shoes for a moment, we can feel his discomfort and we can hear his questioning. Everything is ripped away from Job. His life is ruined. We hear him complain bitterly. He argues vehemently, he protests, he questions, and he rails against God. He demands a right to be heard. Job is destitute, sick and alone. We know about these things too, and it's hard not to be overwhelmed by them. But this is an amazing story of an amazing person. Job's faith never wavers, and as we read his story, we can feel his inner strength. Job never lets go of God. He never curses God. He never disowns God. He reaches out to God and God stands by him. Job comes to know God in a new and deeper way, a way in which he has never known him before. Literally plucked from death, he's not only restored to his former status, he surpasses it. 
and the strength he discovers, the assurance he feels, is there for us too. This is good news, and it's the nearest the Old Testament comes to an Easter experience. Remember too that on the first Good Friday, though mocked, deserted and hung up to die, Jesus held firmly on to God, even though he would no longer sense God holding on to him. Jesus' story is much greater than Job's, but the good news is the same. Hold on to God. Hold on really tightly, the tougher things get. Even when things look desperate, God is there. Personal suffering and chaos and lives out of control are not the final word. God speaks powerfully. These stories speak powerfully to us today in the face of the coronavirus. There is good news to hear. Clearly, we must not act as if Christ has not come, for that would lead us to avoid taking responsibility. Acting responsibly means putting love into action, and it means that our priority now is to stay at home, to stay safe, to protect the NHS and to save lives, to pray and support one another in new ways and in the best way we can. The taking of responsibility as a Christian means living in the knowledge that decisive battles have already been won. It means living with the strength and assurance that comes from holding on really tightly to God. The tougher things get. This is a time of crisis, of storms, of chaos and of suffering. But we will not be overwhelmed if we hold on to the story of Jesus calming the storm, the story of Job, the good news of the Christian gospel. Despite apparent evidence to the contrary, Christ is present and God speaks powerfully. As the Church of God in this place, each of us can speak powerfully in the days and weeks ahead. The prayer for Passion Sunday. Merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be assured of my love, care and prayers. May God bless you.